Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. God is good how often? And all the time. Find somebody close to you and keep your distance and just say, neighbor, God loves you. And I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break. I love in two. Amen. Certainly it is just a blessing once more and again to be in God's house. Um, in spite of the current climate that we're living in and everything that we have going on in our world and in our country, in our land, God is still good. Amen. And God is still worthy to be praised. And the God that we serve, y'all, he's not just good some of the time, but he's good all. Even when you ain't no good, guess what? He's still good. Even when we don't act good and even when we know what is good, God is still good. And I know there are a lot of emotions that are going on in our world and in our country right now. Dr. King said it best. Dr. King said rioting and looting is the voice of the unheard. And what you have right now is a race, a group of people. People are hurt and people feel misunderstood and people feel like their voice is not being heard. Like people don't understand the plight that they're having to face right now. We don't just have a pandemic of COVID-19. We have a pandemic of racism that is running rapid in our country and in our land right now. How is it that we are still in the same place that we were 600 years ago? How is it that we got through 300 years of slavery, treated like nothing but cattle, like dogs, sold at the auction block, then had to go through another 100 years of fighting if you wanted to have the right to vote or to sit at the table with somebody else or, or to even eat at the table that somebody else said that. And then, you know what? We'll help you out a little bit. You know what? you struggling single mom. We'll give you affordable housing. We'll give you food stamps. We'll give you all that. But guess what? The man can't be in the house if you want that government subsidized housing. So what it is, they have broken up the home of the black people. So what it is, we ain't in trouble, y'all. And it's time for us to wake up to what we have going on. It's not time to go out and be tearing up nothing and acting like you lost the left side of your mind. It's time for us to get down on our knees and call on the name of the Lord and ask God to help us with what it is that we have going on right now. But you can't get mad at the folk for what they're doing. You can't get mad because people, when people get upset, they lash out. They lash out. They use that energy that they have on the inside of themselves to lash out. And what you have, they maybe not know how to check that anger. But people are saying, hey, man, we're tired of this. We're tired. When is enough going to be enough? But uh, Isaiah chapter 61. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 61. As I, I'm already in the lesson. We, we just got ahead of it. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 61, beginning at verse number 1, concluding at verse number 11. The grass withers and the flower dove shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. Isaiah chapter 61, beginning at verse number one. And the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. For your shame ye shall have double. And for they, your confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I the Lord love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering. 
and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, and they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decked himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her blood, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. I want to give for our message for our consideration this morning. Help me, I can't breathe. Help me, I can't breathe. When compassionate people hear those words, help me, I can't breathe. We rush to help the victim. We loosen their collars. If there's a reason to suspect that food is lodged in the person's throat, then we put in the, the Heimlich maneuver to try to help the people out. When we hear somebody say, help me, I can't breathe. And, and when we see somebody appear to have trouble breathing, we, we rush to help them. And we rush because we know that, as Dr. You would assure, that humans can't survive without oxygen. Although the human brain makes up less than 5% of our body weight, our brain requires 20% oxygen for our bodies to stay alive. Decrease of oxygen to any part of the brain is called cerebral hypoxia. When oxygen is cut off from the entire brain, it is called anoxia. And when oxygen flow is completely cut off from your brains, anoxia, we lose consciousness in no less than 10 seconds. Brain damage depends on how long you are without oxygen. If oxygen flow is restored momentarily, people usually make a full recovery. But the longer the victim is in an unconscious state, the lower the chances are for the recovery because the brain cells begin to die after four to six minutes without oxygen. This is why they are performing cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, on a person who can't breathe is so important. This is why we call 911. People who can't breathe die without immediate help. I can't breathe. Well, the last words of George Smith. As he gasped, as the officer kneeled on his neck from behind and as the other officer stood by, I can't breathe, are the words we hear on the video film by the onlooker as George Smith begged for his life. I can't breathe with George Smith's desperate final struggle to be treated like a child of God. Meanwhile, the officer choking him, and there was a martial arts artist who went on the news a few days later and said that he had the opportunity to stand there and watch as the man did. And he said that he told the man because he is a martial arts trainer and he had trained many of the police that are in that department there in Minneapolis. And he let him know, hey, man, the hold that you have on him is a death hold. The only reason you would have that on him is if you intend to kill. Now, it would be different if you had it on the back of his neck, but you have it on the side of his neck, and what you are doing now is that you are restricting blood and oxygen from flowing through the body, and the officer came and told him, you need to get back. We don't care. That's what their action said. They didn't treat Smith's words as cries from a, a suffering or a struggling man. They didn't protect or serve him. George Smith wasn't treated like he mattered to his family, like he mattered to his community, to humanity, or even to God. George Smith was treated by police, people sworn to protect and defend life as a threat simply because he was suspected of forging a check. Police 
killed George Smith. Other police watched him suffer and die without anything to stop that man from doing what he did. And I'm quite sure that a jury will refuse to convict him of murder. When other police, when other people choke their neighbors to death, you call it murder. Daniel Patelio, a policeman, choked Eric Gardner to death, but the grand jury decision amounts to an official declaration that he was simply doing his job when he killed Gardner, who was also an unarmed black man. But Eric Gardner's death and George Smith's death and the official response to it isn't nothing but a notorious tragedy. Their deaths actually represent what is happening across our world in the ordinary course of business every day. In the ordinary course of business, our friends across the board, Palestinians, thank you, Palestinians are being killed, starved and attacked and robbed and otherwise brutalized as a matter of official policy by the Israeli government. Palestinians can't breathe. The U.S. is doing nothing to help them, but is instead actually bankrolling their oppressor. The U.S. corporations are making profits by selling equipment and services to Israeli government so that Palestinians still cannot breathe. And everyday Palestinians are saying that they cannot breathe. And in the ordinary course of business, wealthy people decide to sell defective cars without safety defects that are maimed and kill people every day of our lives. And people still are saying, I can't breathe. In the ordinary course of business, agents of the U.S. government torture people. They can't breathe. In the ordinary course of business, people are being held hostage in Guantanamo, Cuba. People can't breathe. In the ordinary course of business, innocent civilians are being killed and maimed by U.S. drones. Those people cannot breathe. Every day, the torture and the capture are killed and maimed, and their families are saying, we cannot breathe. In the ordinary course of business, we, simply because you're a black man, you're stopped. You are frisked, you are humiliated, and you are insulted. In ordinary courses of business, you are beaten, you are shot, you are electrocuted by tasers, you are chemically assaulted by tear gas and pepper spray, and most often than none, killed. Every day, people of color in the United States are saying, I can't breathe. In the ordinary course of business, children from families in modest Places who attend public schools receive substandard education. That's not fair to them. You're suffocating their chances. They can't breathe. Every day these people and, and, and these government powers are doing things to oppress the people that they claim can receive liberty and justice for all. They are the ordinary course of business across the world for people today. And everybody is saying, we can't breathe. And we wonder how God can breathe in the face of a pervasive and a systematic disregard for love and mercy. We wonder how God cannot see the suffering. We wonder what God is doing to bring deliverance and justice for those who cannot breathe. Isaiah 61 answers our concerns. There, are a, there is an anonymous figure that declares that he has been endowed with the Spirit of God and anointed to proclaim good news to the poor and also to the downtrodden. This anonymous person has been commissioned to proclaim the jubilee year of release from the bondage for all who are enslaved. These good news, meaning gospel, words are originally intended for the Hebrews in Judah who suffer the effects of Babylonian oppression and power, but they apply to the oppressed people in our world even today. The good news for those who can't breathe is this right here. God sees and God knows. Not only does God see and God know, but God cares about what we are going through. And God is going to act to overthrow oppression off of his people. God sees every George Floyd. God sees every Eric Gardner situation, including those that go unreported. Those that go unrecognized and those that go unattended. God 
knows the anguish and the sorrow of every wounded soul and every victim of injustice in this world everywhere. God cares that the ordinary course of what passes for business is our world is strangling the powerless and the vulnerable to death. God cares that violence and viciousness has become our ordinary course of business instead of justice and mercy. God cares that people who should be performing physical, economic, social, emotional, and moral CPR in this world instead of using their power and their privilege to help are choking us to death. It's a stench to God that people who claim to believe in love and justice will march for the unborn but won't move a muscle for a living man that's saying he can't breathe. It's an outrage to God that people sworn to protect and defend life use power and privilege to abuse and slay their helpless brothers and sisters. God is furious when a nation claims to be a leader of freedom and peace in the world on one hand, while it enables genocide and viciousness against Palestinians and racial profiling against its own people and immigrants in this nation that work harder than they do. Isaiah 61 also shows God's response to the plight of a world trapped in a stranglehold, in a chokehold of violence, hate, and systematic injustice and oppression against a group of people. Unlike their responses that people get, you know, people get so fired up about patriotism. And, oh, you know, I'm American, and I'm this, and I'm that. Well, if, if you will have justice for yourself, why can't you have justice for your brother or your sister that don't look like you? And we got to get it right in the church before we can get it right in the world. Because if you say that you are my brother or my sister in Christ, you cannot be my brother or my sister in Christ unless you as well stand up against the injustices that are going on in this world. Because as long as you are staying silent, you are complicit to what's going on. Why is Sunday still the most segregated day of the week? Why we can't worship together? Why we can't get together? Yeah. Obviously, you feel like it's going to be a white heaven and a black heaven. Yeah. Yeah. If we can't worship together and love on each other down here, yeah. you're going to have gate trouble, man. You're going to have trouble trying to get into heaven. And if you really want to be honest about it, if Jesus came back today, yeah. they crucified you say that for me? Because if he came back today, he wouldn't look like them. Hair like wool. Bronze. Feet. <laughs> if he came back today, they would say, nah, you're lying. You are a hypocrite. You are an imposter. You are not my Jesus because they have created within their minds a western figure of what Jesus is supposed to look like. Even the Jesus figure that you got hanging on your wall right now is a white man from Italy. But we go out and we get panties and oh, you know, I got Jesus in my house. He better be up in here. He better be in your mind. It's where he better be. Let me get back over here before I get in. God's response to violence is not to train more killers. God's response to robbery isn't to create a religious order of Christian crooks. God's response to a toxic realities and threats of evil and injustice isn't to let loose a religious version of the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, or even the KKK. Instead, the divine remedy and deliverance for those who can't breathe and for our strangled world is the power of redemptive love of Jesus made personal. The reality of redemptive love made personal 
is what we're reading right here in Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news, to bind up, to proclaim liberty and release the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God and to comfort all them that mourn. That's Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. Now, God performs CPR on his strangling children and his strangled creation by empowering people as counteractive agents of divine love, divine liberation, divine justice, and divine peace. This good news of redemptive love made personal is summed up by the life, the ministry, the crucifixion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The good news of God's redemptive love made personal is what Jesus presented the world and now calls us to embrace. Jesus calls us to be divinely appointed agents of redemptive love. Jesus calls us to confront and counter the systematic and the institutionalized violence and oppression that is choking people in our world to death. Jesus calls us to do more than offer condolences to people who are being choked to death by systematic violence and oppression that passes for the ordinary course of business. Oh, you know, it happened all the time, man. We are called to be more than religious funeral directors for casualties of oppression and injustice. No, God has appointed us as messengers and methods of liberation, of truth, of justice, of mercy, and of peace. And God has appointed us as messengers and methods of divine judgment as the purveyors as the practitioners and the apologists of a systematic violence and oppression that is running rampant in our world right now. Finally, God promises that justice will triumph over oppression. Because of God's redemptive love made personal, those who can't breathe are promised a garland instead of ashes. The mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called, the Bible says, oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord, the display of God's glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. The reason for that promise is found in Isaiah 61 and verse number 8. He says, for I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I'm going to put that in plain terms for you. You do wrong as much as you think you can do wrong. You do evil as much as you think that you can do evil. And you think that you are getting away with it. You may get away with it on this side. But guess what? There's a higher power that you got to answer to one of these days. Every lie that you've ever told. Every ill will that you've ever had towards somebody. Every evil deed that you've ever done. You're going to have to stand before God. And you got to answer for it. But I'm torn. How can people who say they love God on their way to heaven? I'm a member of the church of Christ. I've been to church 50 years. I set up communion. Good for you. (laughs) But when you see your black counterpart, brother or sister, being oppressed, being mistreated, why is it that you can't be as radical as your Jesus was. Do you think that Jesus would stand back and just watch a group of people be mistreated and downtrodden? Why? And, and you know why I think a lot of preachers won't speak out against it? It's because they know it just may very well be a great number of my members that think that way. And I don't want to run nobody off. I don't want to upset anybody. I don't want to get on anybody's bad side. The truth is going to be the truth. I don't care whether they like it or whether they don't like it. You as the man of God, as whoever you are, in your respective position, you have a, you have a call, you have a charge that's been placed on your life to speak the truth in love to everybody 
that you come in contact with and wherever there is an injustice, wherever there is a wrong that is done to somebody, I don't care if they red, they black, red, yellow, whatever color they are, you ought to stand up against the wrongdoing that's going on. I can't breathe. God loves justice. And he hates oppression. Redemptive love made personal would triumph over violence. It would triumph over greed, over hate and fear. Because God loves justice and hates oppression, God will avenge those that are choked to death by agents of violence and greed and hate and fear. Because God, loves in, because God loves justice and hates oppression, God's people of redemptive love, I'm talking about y'all now, must not stand by and look like deers caught in headlights as people scream, I cannot breathe. We must not be content with reading Bible lessons and singing songs of praise and hymns. We must not, should not, and will not be satisfied with just sitting down and just singing kumbaya like we've been doing for the past 600 years and expecting things to work. We got to exercise the rights that God has given us. So many things as simple as voting, going out and letting your voice be heard. We get mad and upset when those that are put in power will make decisions that we don't agree with. Yet when it times to elect, when it comes time to vote, you sit at the house and you won't even go out and exercise the right that has been given to you. Even in our past election, so much difference could have been made if a third of the people would have went out and just let their voice be heard and let their vote count. We can't be mad because sometimes we are our own worst enemy. And the reason we'll never be able to overcome what we got going on in our country right now is because we're still too busy killing each other. And, and pulling each other down. Man, ain't gonna let bro pump me up and to pull up on me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on the way. You know, we you know we you get, get mad and upset and we go out and we're doing crazy stuff, throwing our lives away. Yes, sir. When y'all we got work to do. We got work to do. They, they say, oh, we, we, we come a long way. No, we ain't went nowhere. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, we have come so far. We've advanced so far. Don't think what? No, we have. You just been on a miracle ride. Yeah. You just been going around so fast. You thought things had changed. But once that stopped, you realized. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't, you see yeah. Didn't I see this already? Yeah. Things are the same way. Even in my hometown right now, I always wanted. I just checked on this recently. I always wondered on Wednesday at 12 o'clock, everything in downtown Greenville, Alabama closes. I never wondered. Bank, courthouse, city hall, everything at 12 o'clock on Wednesdays, everything closes. And when I went back and checked the history, I realized that in Butler County, it was hanging time. So why is it 2020 and y'all are still shutting the city down at 12 o'clock? To commemorate hanging time. I can't breathe. So as people inspired by a gospel of redemptive love made personal in obedience to the life, the ministry, the crucifixion, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let us do moral, physical, intellectual, economic, social, emotional, and global CPR for those who cannot read. In God's name and as people empowered to live out the gospel of redemptive love made personal, let us intervene and stop a off officious and officious, officially sanctioned violence, robbery, and oppression whenever we meet it. Then those who can't breathe will see themselves and be acknowledged as people whom the Lord has blessed. Before in Isaiah 61 and 9, he says, they will rejoice in the Lord. According to verse number 10, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden 
causes what is sown in it to spring forth. So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before the nation. You quoted the scripture already. If my people that are called by my name, that's us, his children, the called out, those that have obeyed the gospel call of Jesus Christ, that's us. We are his children. We are supposed to be on our knees right now. But if you really want to be honest, we, 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 we want, you know, truth be told, I, I saw a couple of my brothers and sisters up in Atlanta the other night looting. All up in the Gucci store. Gucci ain't did nothing to y'all. I follow these sisters on Instagram and they create, they um, um, put they um, made their own hair store, natural hair. And they had probably over well over a hundred and some thousand dollars worth of products in their store. And y'all know that was the first place these sisters hit. I mean, y'all, I mean they ain't they have a string of hair left in the store after they got through. So what we have is we get in a rage and we just act, start acting crazy. But what we're doing now is we're taking the attention of what's really going on. How is us going out and doing stuff like this going to further the cause for equality, for peace, and for justice for the black man and the woman in America? It's not going to do anything. And it was, it was said at one time that the people have to first of all be awakened. They have to be woken up. And then you can teach them to make a change. We've been asleep, y'all. We've been asleep to the issues that are really going on in our land and in our country. We think it's all about having the latest fast shoes. We think it's about going to get our nails and our hair did every week. We think it's about having the latest this and having the latest that. Trying to keep up with somebody else so you can get on your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook and post your pictures so people can see what you got and think you're looking cute. That's all right. But that's not what it's all about. Because while you're doing that, you're not realizing half of that stuff you're buying, you're supporting your oppressor. But don't, but don't let Sister Jan have a business that she got going. What kind of discount you gonna give? Me? Look out for a brother or sister. Help me out. Give me a discount. You, you didn't ask Gucci for no discount. You didn't ask Prada and Louis Vuitton for no discount. So don't come up and be. We sell ourselves sheep. When we don't realize what kind of difference we can make among ourselves if we would but come together and band together. Stop being like crabs in a barrel. Well, you're trying to make a difference. <laughs> you're trying to do something. They're going to call your name. What you? We come from the same place. I was in the class just like you was in the class. Why they ain't call them? There is no me, my, or I in team. Come on now. And that's the only way we're going to get somewhere. It's together. You may be able to run faster by yourself, but you'll get further if you take somebody with you. We got to look out for each other, y'all. Stop beating down on each other. Lift up your brothers and your sisters. Train up the next generation. Make them aware of the things that are going on in this world. Don't let your children be blind to the injustices and the things that are going on in this world. And then when they go to school, they wonder why the, the little Haley said that her hair is not good hair. What does she mean by that? You have to make them aware of what's going on. Because they're going to encounter it in this, in this world at some point in their life. They're going to encounter it. Whether they notice it or not, it's going to happen. And y'all, I truly, I truly believe that as long as there is a world, racism is going, it's going, it's going to be here. It's going to yeah. be here. It's going to be here. That, that, that's not going to change because, it, because it, it, it is, it's something that you have to learn. It's a learned behavior. It's something that you are taught. And as long as there's a devil, there will be always be people that the devil oppresses and causes to do his will and to do his bidding. And people are always going to put that garbage into their children. But you have a train of yours to be upstanding people in their society. Just because people 
say that you're this and say that you're that. You don't have to act like that. You go out, pull your pants up. You don't have to have your pants hanging down. When you speak to somebody, hold your head up and you look them in the eye. Like you know who you're talking to. Like you somehow don't hold your head down and put your hands in your pockets like you digging it in the dirt when you're talking to somebody. You stand and you let them know, hey, I am here. I am attentive. I am somebody. I have a voice. I have value. And what I have to say matters. We here now. They brought us here 400 years ago. We ain't going nowhere. I don't plan on going nowhere. You plan on going somewhere? No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't plan on going nowhere. But it is true. It is true. Just because you were born here does not mean that you are up here. When the Constitution still says that the black man is three fifths of a man, that's what our country was founded on. Never changed it. You know why? Because you are still considered to be three fifths of a man. They would have more respect for little Tutu if he died. Cry for two weeks over little Tutu. Have a nice little service out there for him in the backyard and everything. But when you get shot or choked out in the street, well, what did they do? Well, you, you know, I'm not going to judge anything. I only seen part of the video. I don't know what happened before this. I don't know. No check you forge that calls for your life. And to come to find out the man wasn't even forging the check. No, he was not. And then, ooh, I, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. But ooh, what really got me up to this was the lady in Central Park. Yeah. The, it's, it, the bad thing is, y'all, had that not been video and the police arrived on the scene, it would have just been another incident gone wrong. And, and you, you know, it's one thing to talk to our white counterparts and tell them that this stuff actually goes on, that people fake this kind of stuff. But then the actually showed them the video. Now you can't deny it. this woman has the idea, she has the, the conception in her mind that if I, as a white woman, Call the police and tell them that a black man is attacking me. They're going to come out here and rough him up. And the man, was, and she was coming up in his face, touching him. He was telling her to back up. And she said, oh, oh there's, there's a black man. He's, he's attacking me. Put it on. And it's sad that that's our reality. So pray for our young black men. Not just our young black men, pray for our older black men. Because if we are in the wrong place at the wrong time, we could very well be the next one saying, help me. I can't breathe. But y'all, what made me preach this sermon today was when I actually watched the video all the way through. And I could hear a 43-year-old man Ask for his mom. Who died already? I thought about Steve as he was being stoned to death. Your mama, who's already gone, a 43 year old, do you know how bad of a condition you gotta be in? Yes, sir. Oh, man. Yes, sir. Mama. And doctor, check me if I'm wrong, but the man began to complain that his stomach was hurting. Because as your, your body begins to shut down, it gets ready for that last move. That last move, that's going to happen. So you are aware that this man is saying he can't breathe. His stomach is hurting. This man is in the process of death, and you still got your dead man. Mama, you know you you in some pain when you call for your mama. Nurses standing around, he's in trouble. Let me check him. Let me help him. Back up. 
killed in broad daylight. Open season on the black man. No difference than going down to the place where you get your hunting license and saying, hey, I want a hunter tag on some deals and shit. It's open season, year round, on us. And I want to be, and I want to be, I want to let you know, uh, and, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, the Bible does not give you any leeway to just senselessly stand there and be on the brute end of injustice. It does not. And, and, I, and I'm a person that fully believes that if your life is threatened and you have the chance to help yourself, you need to help yourself. Don't foolishly just sit around and think that you have to take punishment and cruelty. If you can defend yourself, you need to defend yourself. But don't go out making rash decisions and doing stuff that's going to cause attention to yourself. Make wise decisions. Make wise choices. But preacher, what this got to do with anything? Because y'all, we need to realize that just as the children of Israel were oppressed for 400 years. Come on. Slavery, degradation, down in Egypt. And, and, and all that time, they had been crying out before God. And one day, God came to Moses in a, a bush that was on fire. Moses said, man, what, what is this? A bush, and I see it's on fire. Yet the bush is not consumed. As Moses came up, God told Moses, he said, hey, he said, take your sandals off. He said, for the ground that you now stand, he said, this is holy ground. Moses took off the sandals and he came in. And God began to talk to Moses. He said, I, I've heard the cries of my people by reason of their taskmasters down there in Egypt. And he said, I want to let you say, Moses, I'm going to send you down out of Pharaoh. And I want you to tell him to let my people go. Moses said, Lord, who am I? Lord said, Moses, you know, I, 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 I got a stuttering problem. You know, my, my tongue is a little tired. I don't really speak real well. God said, you know what? You go, and I'll speak for you. Well, what is it I'm going to say? You go, and I'll tell you what to say. But when I go, who should I say sent me? I am that I am has sent me. We are the Moses of today. We are the Moses of today. Ministers, elders, deacons, sons and daughters of God. We are supposed to be leaders wherever we go. And just as God delivered his people from 400 years of slavery and oppression, I ain't got no better sister to believe that God would deliver us today. But we can't be like the children of Israel. We get ready to come out this thing. Yeah. Some of us wanted to go this way. Some of us wanted to go back to Egypt. That's why some of them had to die out yeah. before they could get to the promised land. Oh Lord, and I truly believe, you know, uh, you know, Corona didn't end up here by accident. These wild, these killer bees or whatever, they didn't, they didn't wind up here by accident. Everything that happens, it first of all got to go through the filtration of God. So God, because God saw the thing coming before it ever was made up. Yeah. Yeah. And God has a purpose and a plan in everything that he is doing. So they first of all, some had to die out before they could even get to the promised land. Because they, the idea of this way, and some want to do this as well. They said, man, have you brought us out here in the wilderness to die? At least when we were in Egypt, we could at least eat from the flesh pots of Pharaoh. At least we had something to eat while we were back there. Complaining. Upset. Mad. And God has been doing what you asked him to do. Yes, yes. Right before your eyes. That's the answer. Water good. coming out of a rock. Raven had sense enough not to eat the bread, but to drop it down to you. <laughs> Just as God delivered his people back then, God would deliver us today. God would deliver us today if we remain humble, if we stay in the will of God. And first of all, y'all, our knees got to stay at you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got to stay in the 
face of God. Yes. Prayer and meditation yes. upon the word of God. Because that's what you're going to need so you don't find yourself slipping when you're confronted with some of this stuff. Because Satan, he's already, he's gone out as a roaring lion seeking whom he made him out. He's already gone out there waiting on you. But you're going to have to be like the teacher, the great teacher, when he was out in the wilderness. And when Satan came upon him to tempt him, every time he came, it is written. It is written. Cash, command these songs. It is, it is written. And we are going to have to really get to a place to where, like David said, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Why do I have to have that mindset? Because if not, you will end up doing what you don't need to do. And that is having a hatred for the white man. And one. And that's not what you want to do. No. You don't want to categorize any group of people as if everybody is the same. Just like they do us with their all thugs. Just 22 days ago, white men on the Capitol, on the steps of the Capitol there in Michigan, yeah. Yeah. holding yeah. guns and oozes yeah. and you protesting. Heard you heard Trump, y'all you, president, tweeted and said, <laughs> y'all president said, 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 the governor of Michigan really needs to just listen to what they have going on. Because those are some good people. They just want to be heard. They just want to be heard. But when we protest, when the loot starts, the shooting starts. Kill them. Why would we burn down the projects? That's what we say. Time has been far spent. Time has been far spent. We could be on this all day. Time has been far spent. I want to encourage my brothers and my sisters, those of you who are here, those of you that are watching, to be mindful, to be aware, and to be hopeful of what God has promised us. And that is deliverance yeah. and shelter in the time of storm. Yes. As I said earlier, we're not just going through a pandemic of COVID-19 in our world right now. We've been going through a pandemic of racism for well over 400 years yes, as we've been here in this land. We've been going through that. God has promised deliverance to his people. But we must, again, remain prayerful. We must be in the face of God, and we must learn how to channel the energy they have. Because I know we all going to get mad. You can get mad, the Bible said, just be angry and sin not. You can get mad, but don't go out and break into Linux Mall, going into Gucci store, knowing that you left some fingerprints, and just as soon as they can catch you up, you're going to jail. You're going to jail. They got a million cameras in Linux. I hope they had a mask on. But every single one of y'all that went up in there touching this and touching that, you leaving evidence behind. Yes. Yes. Don't think they ain't coming for you. Coming. We got to learn how to channel that, in, that energy. Do, do like, do like the, our, our, our predecessors did. They marched to let their voice be heard. My, my great grandmama, if she was here, I would love for her to tell the story about how she was there when she marched with Dr. King and them as they were going over the Edmunds Pettus Bridge down in Selma, Alabama, bloody Sunday, as they brought out tear gas, sprayed the people and dogs and sick them all, as they were just trying to march to have the right to vote. You bring us here, and we build it, but we can't have no rights in it. My brothers and my sisters, God has promised deliverance, God has promised salvation for us. God has entrusted us as his sons and his daughters with his word. What did he tell you in, in Matthew chapter 28, 19? Go out into all the world and preach the gospel. That, that don't just include being up in here, here, here in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That means going out and empowering your brothers and sisters, the ones on the street corner, 
the ones that you pass by, the ones that you don't want to talk to sometimes, you know, the ones that we kind of sometimes stray away from, we're supposed to be out there encouraging them also with the same gospel that we have heard so that they one day too might obey the word of God. Amen. God has promised us salvation and we need to believe on him. We need to depend on him and trust on him because he will do exactly what he said and has promised to do for us. My brother, my sister, if you're here today, you're standing in the need of prayer. I'm going to first of all be the first to say, y'all pray for me. Because I'm standing in the need of prayer. Why are you standing in the need of prayer? prayer? I'm black. And I just don't know. One day I might be walking out of Walmart and drop my receipt. And they might feel like just because I ain't got a receipt that is not mine. They call the police and things so quickly. I, before I know it, things can escalate. I, I may be pulled over side and road and he may mistake my car for somebody that just killed and murdered somebody. And I'm trying to get out of the car to tell him I'm giving up before he just shot me down. I just may very well be coming out the gas station with an Arizona juice and a pack of Skittles in my hand. And I may have a hoodie on. It might be a little cold outside. And I may be walking trying to get home. And I just might be shot down just because I look suspicious. I may be in the store writing a check. And they said, well, what that black man and doing with a checkbook. He ain't got no money. That just may very well be somebody else's checkbook. And so I get tackled and somebody's neck, somebody's knee is put on my neck simply because, not because I did anything wrong. But because I'm a black man. So pray for me. We all stand in need. And my brother, my sister, you're here today. You're not a Christian. You have not yet submitted yourself to obedience by being baptized with him in the water and the grave of baptism. This is your opportunity. You will, I, I, don't, I don't think anything just happens by accident. I believe that all things are orchestrated within the will of God and within the plan of God. And God's plan and purpose is not that any of us should perish, but that all of us should come to repentance and that all of us should have everlasting life with him. That is God's will and that is God's purpose. Well, you come by hearing this word, Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17 says it according. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. After hearing, you believe that same he said, except you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. After belief, you repent of your sins. What is repentance? Was repentance is a change within your mind that produces a change in your action. And after repentance, you confess with your mouth the sweetest name known to mortal tongue, and that is that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And then be willing to be baptized with him in the water of grave of baptism. Have your sins washed away, eradicated, done away with, never to come up before you in this life and neither the life that is to come. And according to Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. You can be saved today. You can have your sins washed away. If you're standing in the need of prayer, you can get prayed for today. As together we stand and sing the song of invitation.